Okay, this is the marking out of part 6 and 7 for the airplane project. Um, part 6 and 7 basically you mark them out the exact same way, you drill them the same way and you cut and file them the same way. The only difference between the two parts is that the uh, section at the end is bent in the opposite direction. So again we're going to use one piece of material and mark both on the same side, one on the left, one on the right. I'm going to start off, and I'm going to move one of these out of the way because we don't really need two drives. I'm going to start off by marking out this rectangular box here and then we'll worry about that second of all. So the height of the box is 12 millimeters. So I'm going to measure up 12 millimeters and T square line across. The width of both boxes is 10 plus 15 plus 10, which is 35. I'm actually going to mark um, the 10, the 15, and the 10 from both sides to make life easier in a minute. So marking 10, and 10 plus 15 is 25, plus 10 is 35. And I'm going to mark those from the opposite direction as well. So 10, 25, and 35. Now, we're only interested in marking these first two up to the end of the box, and then the other one we're going to mark all the way up. So, mark this last one the whole way up. This one is going to go the whole way up as well. I'm going to flip it around to make it easier to hold. Mark that up to the 12 line and mark that up to the 12 line. Now this section in the middle is going to be cut off, cut off later on. So I'm just going to scratch that so that we know we don't need it. Now, the section here is 12 millimeters up, but we know from here that the holes are 6 millimeters up. So I'm going to mark on the left hand side 6 millimeters from the end, and I'm going to just use the T square to mark the other all four lines. So I've lined that up carefully, and I'm marking 6 millimeters. I'm going to use the T square now. I'm not going to draw a full line across, you can, there's no problem, but I'm just going to mark the lines where we need it. Now I'm going to punch the four of those because we are going to drill them later on and again remember it's aluminium it's thin so you only want to gently punch each point as accurately as possible. Now that's the bottom section done for each one. <coughs> It's going to be bent along that line. So now we need to worry about these curvy sections up the top. They're circles or parts of circles. So this is a part of a circle here and this is a part of a circle here. What a lot of people get caught out on is the fact that they're actually on different heights. Now the first circle is up 16 millimeters. So we're going to measure up 16 millimeters. Mark it. I'm going to draw a line with a T-square about halfway across on both squares. So you've got something like that. Now, the radius is 12 millimetres on both circles. So the distance from here into the centre must be 12 millimetres as well. And the distance from there in is 12. So we're going to get our ruler and measure 12 across. Again, always as accurately as possible, taking time to make sure that you are doing it correctly. And we're going to punch those because the dividers will slide on metal if there's no punch mark. Hi. 
out. The radius is 12, so we put 12 on our dividers. I'm going to start at 10. I find that's a more accurate way of doing it. And that means I'm going to go as far as 22. 10 plus 12 is 22. And I'm now going to draw two curves. And if you've done your marking correctly, this curve should be tangential to the edge and this curve tangential to the line there. Now, the next thing is the second curve on the other side. Now, we went up 16 and in 12 here. We're going to go up 19 and in 12 to get those ones. So again, I'm going to measure up the edge, 19 millimeters. I have a mark there, and I'm going to use that mark to line both sides at the one time. Approximately halfway. And again, I'm going to measure from there in 12 millimeters to find the center because it's a radius 12 circle. And again, I'm going to punch both points. And once again, so long as we haven't adjusted the dividers, we know it's set at 12, we can just draw partial circles here as well. And so at this stage, you've got the thing almost marked out. Now, when we draw the two circles, you'll notice they curve in and touch each other here. But in the drawing, that doesn't happen. The circle comes underneath this line in both cases. This is a tangent to the two circles. So we're going to get our ruler, and very carefully, I'm going to do this upside down so you can see better. We're going to bring it up and line it up so that the ruler is just touching the two circles, and draw a line across there. And I'm going to do a second time. And there we go. With the two pieces marked out, I'm just going to shade in the areas that we're going to cut off. And that's it marked out. So the next stage is to drill these and then we'll cut them to shape. Okay, this is drilling this part and I'm going to hold it in the hand vise at the end opposite to where I'm drilling. Make sure it's nice and tight in the vise. Um, don't forget to wear goggles when you're on the drilling machine. And we have four holes to drill, two for each part. This is going to be loud. So my part is drilled. The reason I did it out moving around there is one of the burrs on the back was causing the piece to be lifted up from the wood. So I wanted to try and find a place where it wasn't interfering. Uh, once again, get a big drill bit and just tidy up the burrs on the back. And we're done. Now the next part is to cut out these pieces. I'm going to do that on the shears. I'll be cutting 
along this line, this line, and cut the tangent, and then just cut off the corners, but not going over the circle, and you'll see that when it's done. I'll be doing that off camera. Okay, so we're uh, just filing down these two tail fins, okay? It is simply a matter of rounding the corner on both sides. No serious work there at all. Will take you a couple of minutes, and do remember not to go over the circle. Aluminium is thin material, you need to work near the vise at all times and don't forget to use soft gels. Piece one done. Right, so yesterday before I finished filing, the camera actually stopped recording. I think the time limit might have been up. Uh, regardless, there was only a little bit left to be done. So these were finished off around the corners. The edge is nice and flat here. Again, I'm not too worried about the surface finish. Uh, now, the only thing that's left to do now is bend these two pieces. I've already set up the machine. and It's at 90 degrees. But these two pieces have to be bent opposite to each other. So I'm going to flip this one over, okay, so that the two parts are kind of symmetrical. And I'm going to use the line on one of them, the one that I can see up, to line up the other piece. So I can see the markings on the left one here in front of me. I can't see the markings on the right, but I can put it right up against the edge of the left one and make sure that the bases are level to each other. We clamp down our bar carefully and this is set to 90 degrees already. Bend it up. I'm actually going to bend just a little bit more. And there we go now. Trying to get this to focus. There we go. So now our two pieces are bent and they're actually bent in opposite directions. And we have our tails done. So that's part six and seven done. Um, moving on to the next part. <laughs> 